Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at classes again and following our object-oriented programming theme of inheritance as we have in the last few lessons, but this time talking specifically about multiple inheritance. That is this idea that we can inherit from multiple classes to drive a new type and behaviors with that type. Now, multiple inheritance for this reason gets a bad reputation because it can make your code much more complex. And that is true. With that said, though, I'm going to try to look at some code and see if we can figure out why multiple inheritance is a feature that we should probably avoid and see if there are any use cases where multiple inheritance may be useful. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into some code. So what I've prepared here is a little bit of an example. I'm going to go ahead and draw on our whiteboard here just so we can understand some code. This should look relatively familiar for most of our users if you've been following our lessons, but feel free to backtrack a few lessons if you're not comfortable with inheritance at this point. So what I've got here on the left is a struct, and remember structs are the same thing as classes, but in this particular example I'm just using a struct because it makes everything public and a little bit less code to write on the left side of the window. So with that said, here's a new user-defined type here, dog. And that's actually going to sit at the top of our inheritance hierarchy. And then from dog, we're going to be driving a new data type called golden. So I'll go ahead and draw that down here. And I'll draw an arrow here just so we can see that it is derived from dog and goldens are a type of dog. So again, they inherit functionality. And then the next type that I have here is a border collie. So I'll go ahead and Write this one in, border collie as one word. And again, that inherits publicly from doc, as can be seen here. So again, it's giving all the functionality of a dog because a border collie is a dog. Again, that is a relationship being important. Now, what's new here this time is what you're going to see at line 17, which is a, another type of dog breed, which is the mix of golden and border collie. Uh, Colt Retriever. So I'll go ahead and put that down here. Now what's interesting about this, and this is the new part, is that it's inheriting or deriving uh, functionality from Goldens and Border Collies here. Okay, so that's this new type here. So it is a type of Golden, it is a type of Border Collie, and it is a type of dog because it falls in this hierarchy. Now what this pattern forms is a sort of diamond. So I can sort of outline this shape here and we get this sort of diamond uh, structure here if we fill this in here. And generally that can be a little bit difficult to understand because again I already had to explain that it's a type of golden, type of border collie, and a type of dog. So what is the actual type if it's derived from two different things? And that's one reason why folks shy away from multiple inheritance. In fact, if you're coming from a language like Java or C Sharp, they make it very hard to implement multiple inheritance. You have to do it through interfaces and other uh, sort of workarounds if you truly want it. It's not a built-in language feature per se. So with that said though, let's take a look at this code here to see what's going on. Now each of these uh, user-defined types here have one member function defined, bark here, and they print out the type and who is uh, barking here. So let's go ahead and compile this code here. And I'll do this with uh, the latest version of C++ here that's been standardized. Our main and up with this program. And if I run it, well, we can see that each of the dogs are calling their appropriate bark function here. And this is fine in the sense that we have a concrete type on the left. We know exactly what this type is and each of these have their associated functions. Now, where do things get a little bit messy with multiple inheritance here? Well, let me go ahead and extend our code window here so we can see everything. And if you recall last time when we were doing inheritance, we had to, uh, or one of the things that we did was implement virtual functions here. So if I make this virtual, for instance, for Bark, because I might want to override the behavior of how a golden barks or how a border collie barks. Um, and then I go here and override this behavior and override the behavior 
And I'll go ahead and override the behavior of the cold retriever, which in a sense has to be taking over this bark function. So each of these need to be virtual. So let's go ahead and make these virtual. And let's go ahead and try to compile. Again, no real problems here because we have the actual concrete type. So nothing's really changed here. But since we've set things up with virtual here, remember that the real advantage was that we can at runtime determine what the type is. So I'm going to slightly rework this example that I have here and not have such concrete types here. So let me go ahead and just uh, erase this here and set up a new example here where I just instantiate everything as a dog here. So I'll go ahead and highlight that block here on the left side of the screen. And you can see that we are instantiating a dog at runtime, a golden, border collie, cold tree for all of our types. But again, on the left side, we're just pointers to dogs. So anything that is a dog. So let's go ahead and compile this and run it. And well, voila, we get the right behavior. So again, this is fine. We've done everything fine from a programming perspective. Now, here's where things get a little bit messed up though. And what if I don't implement bark here on cold retriever? Okay, so I have this virtual function here and then I try to compile here. Well, now this call is ambiguous. And I'll go ahead and leave this uh, error message up as I review our diamond uh, pattern here because again, cold retriever is derived from golden and border well, which bark functionality does it get? Does it get this functionality here or does it get this functionality here? The compiler can't decide and usually it'll give you a warning these days that it's ambiguous. In the worst case, it will just pick something which we really don't like, <laughs> but this does cause an error. And this can become confusing as you have deeper and deeper inheritance hierarchies here that you might want to implement. So as these diamonds appear, it becomes very difficult to maintain your code and understand your code. This example here that I've done is a pretty shallow or not a very deep tree, so it's reasonable. We can reason about this. But even as we start adding more member functions, it becomes a little bit more difficult. Okay, so that's typically an argument against multiple inheritance. It becomes difficult at runtime to figure out the types when you're maintaining the code. Where does the actual behavior belong? Is it here? Is it specific to just this type here? Is it specific here? And again, it's kind of hard to annotate. So just to make clear, we generally see multiple inheritance when we see lines like this deriving a class from multiple as a red flag in our code bases. There may be some use cases to actually have this. And I want to go ahead and just show one where I have seen a useful use case of multiple inheritance, where you want to use inheritance as a tool to add behavior or remove behavior from a class. So allow me to extend this example here. So I'll go ahead and put back our functionality here so that this example um, compiles. Uh, so let me go ahead and make sure that um, I've done this. And now I'm just going to pick a concrete uh, type here um, so that we don't have uh, an error at runtime. And now we can uh, proceed forward and our program is working. Now, what I want to do here again is just show a useful case of multiple inheritance. So I'm going to actually create another class here. I'm going to call it non-copyable. And what the non-copyable data type is going to do is basically just delete the copy constructor and let's go ahead and delete the copy assignment constructor as well or excuse me copy assignment operator so let's go ahead and write our copy constructor so non-copyable and the right hand side and i'm just going to delete it and i'll go ahead and do the same thing for our um, copy assignment operator so operator equal and if you need a little bit of a review on this, you can go ahead and watch the videos on copy constructor and copy assignment operator. And let's go ahead and just delete this. So these two functions now aren't available. And structs, remember everything is public here. So what would happen if I took my dog class and inherited from non-copyable here? 
And again, I'm going to just draw in our hierarchy here, non-copyable, and that would be at the top here of our hierarchy that we are driving. And because I don't have a copy constructor, our, the assignment operator defined, they've been deleted, this functionality, I can't make copies of these objects. So for example, if I try to assign my dog here to this golden, let's go ahead and see what happens. And we're going to get a bunch of error messages. And I'll make it a little bit bigger just so you can see. But you know, now we're getting um, at the very top here, error use of deleted function here for creating our dog. We can't even construct these uh, because of the deleted uh, function that we have from non-copyable here. Now we are getting a little bit of why is this constructor not allowed here? Well, maybe we should um, not just delete everything and let's go ahead and just say uh, non-copyable, you know, allow the compiler to create a uh, default constructor here um, so that we can actually create our object. Okay, so this is still working in a sense that I can compile it and run it, but what we're preventing ourselves from doing here is again making uh, copies here. So let me go ahead and just rework our example a little bit where let's say I create a dog here, dog um, two at this point, and another dog here, dog three, and I try to use the uh, copy constructor here to construct a new uh, dog object here. So at this point, now from our concrete type, which is a type of copyable thing, that's where it's being derived from, it's trying to use some deleted function here because of this drive behavior. Now again, that doesn't stop us from um, if I come down here and making copies when I have things that are just pointers here because um, again, a pointer assignment is just storing an address of something that's in memory. Um, but here we actually get that protection here. So if I'm gonna pass anything uh, by value, I'm not allowed to do that or use this copy constructor or do this assignment here. So again, just to show that that's deleted, let's say that I do create each of dog three and dog two and try to assign them to each other. And then again, we're going to have that deleted function here because even though this is of type dog, it's derived from non-copyable, so we are prevented from doing so. So this can be a layer of protection in your code if you're trying to prevent something from happening, or maybe if you just wanna see in your code very quickly, are you making copies of your object at any point? And you can just use this little trick here to create a um, class here with a bunch of deleted functions to see what functionality is actually being used anywhere in that inheritance uh, hierarchy. And maybe you want to prevent copies or do all sorts of other optimizations or these things. So with that said though, just to wrap us up here, what we've talked about is multiple inheritance and why it can make code bases much more difficult to understand and how the compiler has to try to resolve ambiguous calls or you as the user have to interpret the error message about an ambiguous call and make a right decision. And as these data structures change over time or you add to this hierarchy, uh, many, many levels here, and it might grow in different directions and so on, it gets very difficult to understand your code base. So in general, we try to avoid multiple inheritance, except in perhaps instances where you try to add certain behavior that you might want to have in your class. Again, there's no hard and fast rule about these things, but it's just something to be aware of that some tools need to be used a little bit more carefully in the language. In fact, newer languages try to avoid users from making this mistake unless you really, really are thinking about or really need this functionality. All right, folks, so I hope that lesson was helpful on multiple inheritance and you've learned just a little bit more about C++ and object-oriented programming features. If you found these lessons helpful, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one.